Two trip two two trips back and forth to Rockville. That's, that's that's two hours on the road. Yeah. So I, I've got my laptop. This meeting's over. If you guys are done at noon though, I'll go back and then I'll come back. That's five hours or two hours right here in town. I wish we just had an hour. Yeah, Rogers, though, I'd stay, I would never leave. I'd stay here all the time. I can get so much more done. The travel time kills me. Yeah, I'd say that's a good one. Some time sucks for sure. Yeah, I, I saw your agenda. You guys have some interesting things it looks like. Uh, I can't remember a thing of them. I can't remember one of them. I've got it out in the car and I'm make a link. Update on something interesting. What's the update on? <laughs> Update, oh, the skate parks. No, the skate the dog park. Dog park. Yeah, the dog park. And, uh, no, the skate park. Yeah, the skate park. Yeah, they already tore out the whole cement. Yeah, we've got that grant from the, uh, that's right. Yeah, the grant. Mark, and it wants to go in down here and start the process. I have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order 834 Tuesday May 14 2019 uh, third session of the budget hearing uh, Madam Clerk if you call the roll for the budget committee please uh, budget committee members Rick Brewer here Keith Gibson here Valerie Goins here Mike Correll present Raymond Jesse here John Metz here Charles Sacker here Invited guests, Danny Alvis. Here. Larry Klontz. Here. Glenda Davis. Here. Mark Witt. Here. Bob Ed Ed Edens. Sorry, Bob Edens. Donnie Talley. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have seven members present constituting a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I'm here too. I'm George Brickle. I got you down, Mr. Riddle. Thank you. Who are you? <laughs> Birdwell. Birdwell. Yeah. Keeps what to Birdwell. <laughs> Is there a representative from General Sessions here yet? I know we're a little bit early, but it's not just a time slot. <coughs>
Not yet. Marcus won't check and make sure. He is in route, but I've just been informed that uh, senior citizens are here if you want to go out of order. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to start off with Senior Citizen Center, page 31. And your contribution for us. Thank you. 
with the Rogersville Senior Center and our budget, budget hasn't changed any. It works the way it is. It works good. But the uh, only thing you'll see a difference is in the wages of the salary for uh, it was previously shows as Carolyn Browning's uh, wages and now it shows as mine. That's the only difference. Questions. You've got a seven hundred dollar change in utilities just because they they ran high. Ran high. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Said that there, I don't know who they are. Let's go It's on there. They're both on there together. Yes, sir. Pertaining to the general session for for Judge Ross, uh, I, I do have one question. Uh, I know you're you guys have got to be busy. Yeah. Have you had an increase in the amount of uh, people coming for your court this year mm. over last year? Let me think about where we're. The only way I have to really judge that because we don't have. They're supposed to be putting a. Um, program in place through Nashville. We're the only court that doesn't, um, where they don't keep up with the cases in Nashville. Juvenile court they keep up with, and circuit court obviously they keep up with, but they don't keep up with ours. 
typically when I first came in, we were running um, probably 26, 2700 cases in criminal. Um, civil, I can't, I don't know. There's because you add in traffic tickets and and, and all the detainer warrants and all those things get, get filed in under, under all that. So it's in the thousands, but you know, a lot of those cases are just, you run through them because people don't show up and things like that. But as far as criminal cases go, um, it's probably, probably gone down some, I think, since I started. Um, as far as where we're at this year versus last year, um, I'm just trying to think of what the last case numbers that we had were somewhere in the over, they're over a thousand, so we're probably about, about where we usually are. Um, I think the types of cases are, are changing a little bit. Um, just from looking at it, it seems like we're getting fewer drug cases. I hope that's because we're getting rid of some of the people that are pushing in a little bit more and, and getting treatment for some of those that are using them. And I hope that's the case, it seems to be. But a lot of them are just like driving on suspended and we still get a lot of theft cases and um, things like that. So, but it's probably evening out about the same. Thank you, we appreciate your role. The only thing I can tell you, like last year in 2018 we had 25 people that completed long-term rehab programs, which are nine to 18 month programs. Um, and all 25 of those people are people that would have been in jail up here, you know, during that time period. Um, and we've got others that are in the process of completing that. So uh, we're trying to offer that to, to some of those and they put some services in the jail now to try to make sure that the ones we send are the ones that really want to get some help. So um, Community Justice started a MRT program, which is a 12 week long, group counseling type program that they have to participate in and I'm making most of them complete that before I let them go to rehab now instead of just letting them go because a lot of them go and then are out leave. But, um, so we're trying to increase that number that successfully completes that. Are you having a uh, fairly good success rate uh, on that, on those going to those programs? How do you define that I guess? Um, to me 25 people complete long term, that's, that's wonderful. Again, that's 25 people that would have just spent um, a year or two years sitting in jail and they would have gotten out with nothing. Well, know, I think it's a great in program. Their, in their pockets. <laughs> Whereas these people, by the time they finish the programs that we send them to, um, they, they've got jobs, they're, they're living on their own, they're, you know, they're contributing. They're, most of them end up coming back to juvenile court and working things out and trying to, get to see their kids and paying child support. And so 18 months, for them, it's a lot different than 18 months sitting in jail and getting out from starting with nothing. So, um, so yeah, I think 25 in a year. Do we get state support? Any state support? For yeah, we don't spend any money on any of that. That all comes through the community justice program. All the all the programs that I've put in place as far as um, offering mm -hmm. rehab or treatment or anything, no no county money has ever gone to any of them. That's all. Um, you know, we'll talk about our recovery court in a minute, but all the money from that comes through community justice. That's just right there helping with that program. The, uh, if no further question for the channel session before we move on to the drug court. I just want to make one note before we moved on. Yes. Um, as, as Judge Ross said, you can see the bottom half of this budget, nothing has changed. All the changes are salary related, which are beyond his control. And I just want to remind everybody that that salary increase is an estimate at this point. CPAS was not released during manual, so how they're going to handle the judge's salary this year. Usually it's a percentage increase tied to the consumer price index, but they've not released that yet. So <coughs> we've estimated last year's. They haven't sent that to you yet? Everybody else, just not you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got that a long time ago. From the sessions conference, maybe. If you have a different version, I would love to, to see it. But. I, think, I may be wrong, but I think that's in it. I'll see what I can find because I didn't. Well, we put 2.1% in there because that's what last yeah. year was. But I don't remember what it was, but I'm pretty sure they sent something. But I'll I'll check and see. I don't need a different resource, but I go on CPAS's yeah. website and check there. I think it came from the General Sessions Judges Conference. I think they sent out an email or something, but I'll, I may be wrong. I'll okay. check on it and see. Thank you. Um, the recovery court budget, just to remind everyone, that money, um, $50,000 of that comes from the state, and we did have our audit 
um, our four-year audit this past uh, April, um, March or April, and uh, we did get recertified. Um, so $50,000 of that money comes from grants from the state through the Department of Mental Health uh, Recovery Corps grants. Mm -hmm. The remainder of our budget is from the uh, DUI treatment fund. Uh, anytime anybody gets a DUI, $100 of their court cost goes into a fund. That fund's been sitting there. It, that's the one, some of you guys may not realize this, that's the one that was sitting there for a long time and nobody really knew what it was for. And it's a fairly significant uh, amount at this point. And my hope is that when we get to the point where, where we have the personnel resources to handle it, I would like to use, I would like to come in and ask for that money to be transferred into the foundation that we started, the Hawkins County Recovery Court Foundation, it's a nonprofit, um, to purchase a, a home to use as a um, sober living halfway house kind of a situation for some of our recovery court people or some of the people that don't have anywhere to go. Instead of just releasing them back out on the streets, having some place we can have them to go. And that's our that's our hope for that. Um, but in the meantime, we've just been using a little bit of it each year um, to offset the budget on the recovery court. So, and again, that's very bare bones. I mean, I think the fifty thousand they send probably covers Amy's salary, and um, and she's a master's level person, and you know she could make a lot more money somewhere else, but she, she loves what she's doing, so she she stayed on. Um, and then we have mandatory conferences we have to go to, which eats up a lot of that budget because the, the whole board is supposed to go. Um, and that consists of the public defender, uh, the DA, um, myself, Amy, the counselor that works with them, probation office. Uh, there's, there's quite a few people on the board and they're all supposed to go and it comes out of the budget as well. So that's, that's where a lot of that money comes from. You'll see that that didn't get expended this year, and Judge, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's because of weather complications. The yeah. conference was canceled. Yeah, we were not. It wasn't canceled, but we didn't get to go. That, okay. It was scheduled the first week of December, and that's when that big snowstorm hit, so we didn't get to go um, to the conference this year, so um, that's why that money didn't get spent. And that's why we're still asking for the same amount next year. We don't yeah. assume to have a, a weather issue again, and that'll be an expense needed to cover the cost everybody is able to attend. <clears throat> said none of that money comes from the county budget anyway so your folks are also on the salaries list correct yeah and I hear <laughs> <laughs> and I know I, I know you know I read the paper I, I know what what situation you guys are facing but um, and I'll just tell you from you know, I hear from everybody but I think the biggest issue is a lot of the girls, you know, mine included, probably feel like, you know, they've been here a long time. Kelly's been here 20 years, I guess, or close to it. Um, Terry's been here a long time as well. But, I, I mean, obviously they like to have, have more money in their paychecks, but a lot of it, if they look at other people and, and people talk and they know what other people make and they see people working in other offices doing very, very similar jobs to what they do, making very significantly higher income. And um, you know, it appears like like they just like some some office holders have been able somehow. Uh, I, I never understood how this works. I guess I'm not a good politician, but some office holders have been able to get their people raises when you know it's been said you know the county can't give raises or we're doing this or we're doing this salary scale. And you turn it around, and find out that somebody got a ten percent raise or something, and, and that's what that's what brings about a lot of animosity, you know, between offices is when. Everybody's told we can't give raises, and then they find out that somebody got one, or, or somebody's making ten thousand dollars a year more than they are for basically doing the same job. So, you know, anything y'all can do in that line, or, or just put more money in your pockets. I don't know. I know y'all pay a lot of the health insurance already, um, but I mean, when I look at you know, what they bring home every two weeks, you know, luckily they both are, are married and their husbands work and have good incomes. But if they didn't. Support a family on that. That's that's pretty sad. But um, there's just a lot coming out of the check every every month. But, but yeah, I was asked to speak about that. So you know, anything y'all can do. I know I know you're in a you know by it's not like there's money out there to be to be spent, but you're supposed to find it and spend it. So um, but anything y'all can do, we 
would certainly appreciate it. Final question for Judge Ross. Thank you, Judge. Your report. Thank you. Thanks. Next to the last one, he's got the breakdown of what we've done in 2018 and 19. One of our state programs, uh, TDA, goes from June, uh, July the 1st through June the 30th, so it's getting ready to be 2020. So that's 19 on there, or EQIP, I have 18 and 19 on there. The TDA state, we've got 120,000. Uh, they've not put it all on the ground yet. We've got till June the 30th for them to do that. Uh, the uh, EQIP, which is federal, for 18, we got funds that was obligated $853,615.43. We had 35 contracts. In 19, we have received over 2 million in applications. We've only got like a million and a half that's been obligated. And it's just now starting. And then our emergency watershed program is we had uh, three in the last since eight, last uh, first of eighteen through now, and that was the AFG Road. And I've got some of this in this report. AFG Road, Van Hill Road. I did not put in there. It was the first of February two thousand eighteen that we paid. And then the Thomas Road that money run through our office. The was two hundred twenty four thousand to help for those roads for the emergency watershed program. So a total down there on the EQIP was 2724000 just in the past year, a little over a year. That's the money part of it. We, we are involved, as you can see in the report, with various educational programs. And we do a, a lot on reduce, reuse, recycle so that we can keep the soil and the water clean and the projects will be a lot easier to fix. And then we have... Um, just various things that we do uh, in the schools all the way from kindergarten all the way through high school um, so is there anything that we can answer that would help you understand us a little better if I needed help digging a well who would I see about it on it would be us, but you, you've got criteria to meet. Can you explain do you have, uh, do you have your boundary fence on your property? Say you've got 20 acres, do you have the 20 acres with the fence on it? Yeah. Do you have livestock on the property? No. Okay, that's the criteria because you do not have a resource concern that needs to be met 
by not having livestock on the property. If you, we just don't dig a well for, a, you know, just to be digging a well. It has to be a resource concern. And having the livestock on the property is a resource concern if you don't have clean water or have water for that livestock. How much will you all pay up? To? It pays from 75% to 90%. 75 on TEA, the state, 90% or 75% on the federal. It's just according on how those criteria are that has to be met and how you fall in the, uh, I guess with your background, I guess you'd say your, you know, if you're like socially, socially disadvantaged, but beginning and new farmers and that type of thing takes it uh, above the 75%. Basically, it's 75%. It's never, mm -hmm. it's not even less than 75%. Do you have any idea how many you all have funded in the last fiscal year? It was 35. I've got it on that page. Uh, and we're right around that right now. Uh, this year with the farm bill and with the uh, shutdown of the government, we have actually not got nobody to sign their contracts this year. It's getting ready to start. Usually that's in February, last of February, and here it is May, and we've not got it done yet because of all that. It's 30, I think it's 30, it may be 35 last year and 30 this year. It's kind of around the ballpark. We never know how much money, because one may be 20000 one may be 100000 You never know how much one's going to be. Once it's completed, is there a uh, limit or statue on how long it has to be used for animal? Hey, there's always supposed to be animals on there. Yeah, but it can be sold. You know, some landowners will come up and decide they're going to sell it. It can be sold during the process of the application, the contract. They just have to the next landowner, you know, can take it over. But it it just varies. You know. Each of the practices has a different like a lifespan on it, so it's whatever the lifespan is of the project. Some of them are five, ten, fifteen, twenty years, yeah. something like that. So we had one child the other day want to take his fence down around his farm. He's not supposed to. We can't tell him he can't. But um, in the contract, he's supposed to keep that fence up for the you know <coughs> through the contract through all of it. Sure, I have a question. Line item 316 listed as contributions. What is that used for? That is our contribution technician. It is a three way match with the state, of county, <coughs> state, and federal. Each of the agencies gives 9,000, or I'll say up to 9,000, according to uh, whether or not the technician stays, because we have turn turnover there. But that's what that's for. It's for the uh, technician to help put this money on the ground. And so that's uh, a few years back, the um, state and federal agreed to do that. And then we, um, I'm not sure how long it's been, maybe five or five Two. years or so that we've gotten. It's that four eyes. Okay. I've been our six years four so eyes. So we got the county to, to also do the 9,000. The 9, but it's capped at 9,000. So that's the county's portion of the three-way contribution technician fund. So the county and, and two more agencies? The, the county and the state and the federal. Okay. Yes. That is the same situation that you all are talking about that, uh, if you remember, I'm not sure, <coughs> Thomas Hicks at the County Valley. Mm -hmm. If you remember that one. Is no, that, I know what Thomas you all Hicks. Are about, uh, on the on one of the projects. Well yeah, he's got a project with us. Yeah. We're yeah. not supposed to discuss you know all that but well, he does I mean, have, I know him yeah well. we, he does have a project with us and he's still working on it he's not finished yeah yeah that's similar to what we do what they do is um, to provide better water quality for your livestock is to fence them out of the creeks and rivers and ponds mm -hmm. and provide a better water source for them so they'll go in and if they need a well they dig a well if they don't they hook up to the least cost alternate if they have city water they hook up to that um, that's the least cost alternate for the uh, federal. It's, it may not be for the landowner. If they go in and they hook up to a well or water or spring and provide a better water source for the livestock. So then that's why the fences is put up for the ponds and the rivers <coughs> and creeks and keep them out of it. Because of the livestock, drinking the water plus using the bathroom and all that, that's not a good, you know, good for them or us. Any additional questions?
questions. We got. We do appreciate what you do. We appreciate what you have allowed us <clears throat> up to now. And like I said, we're this year we're not asking for any increases, but we sure would like to keep what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Chairman, you ready? Yes, sir. You have a uh, uh, okay. It's good to see all of you this morning, and I uh, appreciate you having us come by. And, uh, I had Rebecca pass out. You, you have the, I guess, the, the, the county's version of the budget and everything, and I had it broken out just a little bit differently for... Uh, you come out to the same numbers, but I wanted to explain, I guess, the difference uh, uh, broken down so you can understand it better. Uh, actually, the uh, uh, industrial board operates uh, basically with one employee, one full-time employee. And that's Rebecca, and we had asked the industrial committee to consider an increase in her wages this time, and that's on the bottom, I think, of the of the uh, thing that was passed out. But <clears throat> other than that, and our uh, expenses for uh, just normal uh, phone bills and things of that nature, uh, we do have in there the. Uh, travel and office supplies and stuff like that uh, a total of $59,000. The rest of that is broken down what it takes to run the Phipps Bend Industrial Park. Uh, you've got, we got two part-time people that mow and try to keep the trash picked up, which is a, just about a full-time job up there. Uh, we have to have the audit done for the Phipps Bend venture. Uh, we've got in there $10,000 for engineering services. Uh, you only utilize that when you've got a project and, and we have asked for a little bit more in that because we're currently working two projects there at Phipps Bend. We think both of them will hopefully come to fruition. Um, and then the uh, street light system and, and everything there at the park. Uh, the maintenance of our equipment. Uh, we've got a maintenance building up there uh, that we maintain uh, where we keep our maintenance equipment, the bush hogs and tractors and things of that nature. We don't have any trucks or any vehicles now. Uh, and then we put in 1500 for uh, tires and tubes. Uh, that'll cover about two flats on a tractor. Uh, we're not asking for any additional uh, equipment this year other than maybe a couple of uh, uh, chainsaws or uh, weed eaters. We don't have any large equipment that we're asking for. And then I, uh, that 
shows you what it costs the county to maintain the park. Uh, plus, we put the the fifty thousand that we pay to networks for marketing that for us, and I think that's one of the best deals that we've ever got involved with because. Uh, uh, they spend a whole lot more. Their total budget is in excess of 750000 And I guarantee you they, they spend at least 40 to 50 percent of their time marketing Fitch Bend because we're the largest project they've got in their, their bailiwick to deal with. And uh, we're in constant contact with them almost daily. And uh, they carry Phillips Bend and Hawkins County into all the meetings that they attend all over the United States and the world, really, when they uh, uh, market this, this end of the state. So, uh, and we're involved with their, the Bristol race, that night race that they do, what do they call that event? The red the, carpet. The red carpet event where you bring in all these business consultants uh, I know Rebecca attends many of those, and uh, we get a lot of exposure. That's how we got the RMC project was through that group. And they all came back last fall and attended that spring event, or fall event, uh, at no cost to Hawkins County whatsoever. And then there's 2,000 in there for, is that the three star, what is that extra 2,000? <coughs> No, that's down here. I'm not sure what they put that other 2,000 in. It comes from it's, down it's, here. It's to help you get the three-star award for the whole county, and I guess having no place else to put it, they put it in our budget. Uh, it's that educational thing. I can't remember the name that's of down, it. Right, that's down here on the country. Is it? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, uh, then we've got the other down there, which is the Host and Business Development Center which is another item that's in our budget because of lack of any place else to put it. That is a contract that the county signed about 17 or 18 years ago, and it's still very active, but uh, we put, uh, or the county puts 30,000, or 29, six or something like this, a little less than 30,000 a year into that project. And you've got about, I think, three more years, including this year, that you, you have a contract with the federal government to keep that place running. At the end of that time, then you can walk away, but you've got a building up there, and I would invite any of you to come up and uh, tour that facility and see what they're doing with that money. But uh, you and the city of Kingsport own that facility, and we just uh, <coughs> signed a 25-year extension on that piece of property and are working on another 25 year extension. So you're gonna have a building there that's, that's very nice. It's worth about a million dollars and it's paid for. And so uh, the county mayor serves on that board and the chairman of the uh, budget committee serves on that board along with several other people in Hawkins County. So uh, it's, it's certainly a worthwhile organization uh, and as I've, some of you have heard before, you know, that was a decision made by the county commission, not the industrial board at that time. So, uh, I, I, and I think if you do decide that you didn't want to fund that thing, you know, uh, you are looking at about a $500,000 repayment to the federal government. So. I would certainly encourage you to stay with the program for at least three more years and then you can decide what you want to do with it. But uh, that pretty much covers, uh, we did increase the, uh, we asked for an increase anyway in engineering services from $7,500 to $10,000. Uh, you don't need those funds unless you're working projects and we've certainly our working projects right now as we speak uh, uh, and same thing on legal fees you don't need those unless you're working up contracts and, and deeds and things like that and we've had more than our share of that the last couple of years so 
we feel like we need a little bit more than that. But uh, the bottom line is that we're asking for less money this year than we did last year. And we certainly want you to consider uh, giving the one full-time employee we got a, a raise because the, uh, this is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. If, uh, if a water line breaks or anything happens at Pips Bend, there's only one person that, that can do that on a paid basis. Some of us are doing it on a non-paid basis, but she's the only one that you, you can call when the, when the lights go out or the water system's <coughs> out or there's a problem inside the park. Uh, Rebecca's the only person <coughs> available. We're currently working on a situation uh, almost daily. I know I was on the phone two or three times yesterday with our largest industry in Hoffman County, which is now Barrett over in Bulls Gap. And we've met with them two or three times uh, personally, and, and we've, we've involved uh, the, the uh, state representative, our local congressional uh, person, uh, Dr. Rowe, uh, they're in a fight with Norfolk Southern. And Norfolk Southern, if you've had any dealings with the railroad, is one of the most difficult entities that you'll ever deal with. And they're, they have basically laid off some people over there. Uh, Barrett Industries uses a carload and a half to two carloads of resin a day seven days a week. They keep 50 train cars sitting on the tracks over there and they have an agreement with uh, Norfolk Southern to do that. Norfolk Southern was notified them last week that they were gonna cancel the contract. And they fulfilled that on, on Friday of this week. Uh, we've been in contact with the governor's office and everyone else trying to help alleviate this situation at this point it has not uh, happened but we're hoping to get back on the lines again today and see if we get this thing stopped for whatever reason i don't know what the background with norfolk southern is but my experience in washington and other places dealing with railroads has not been good there's only two non-regulated industries in the united states of america one of them is uh, Major League Baseball and the others are railroads. Mm -hmm. And they play hardball all the time. And they're really giving Barrett a hard time. Barrett now employs over 700 full-time employees. And this could shut them down. Uh, that industry, Eve Barrett has been a, a close friend of ours for over 20 years since he purchased that facility. Uh, he's got six other facilities in the United States. It would be difficult to move, but there's a real possibility if we don't get something worked out that you could lose the largest industry you've got. So we're fighting desperately to involve everybody from the government to whoever. But like I say, they're, they're a hard group to deal with. My experience at Houston Electric with them, when we crossed their tracks, they would let you know very quickly that they're on from heaven to hell. And if you want to go under it, they, you had to pay. If you want to go over it, you had to pay. So, uh, and they didn't make any bones about it. So we're in a real fight, I think, to, to see if we can work out something for uh, this particular industry. But that's part of what the industrial board does more on a day-to-day -day basis than trying to recruit new industry or help the industries that are expanding. That's the ones that make the news. But the day-to-day -day operations is, is uh, quite an involved process. And uh, I can say some of us been doing it longer than probably we should have, but uh, it's, uh, it's something I think that really helps out the county helps out our people, it, it increases their tax base and provides jobs for uh, our friends and family that we've supported all these years. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have.
Larry, could you quickly just tell them about the grant that we're doing up there for the the hundred thousand dollars on the lots? So they'll we got a that's engineering services that we got a well we started out we got a ten thousand dollar grant which led then to us getting a hundred thousand dollar grant uh, to develop uh, around a hundred acre site that it's been. One of the problems that we've got is that we've got a sewer line that runs right, it, it uh, dissects that piece of property. And it's hard to sell a piece of property when you know that you got a sewer line there that's going to have to be moved before they can start construction or something like that. So TVA and the state economic community development people have said they will help us get that uh, sewer line moved. There's also a big man-made, it's, it's more than a ditch, it's a, almost a valley that. down through there that TVA had constructed. Uh, when they leveled all that side off, if they had a major spill at the reactor vessel building, this was to direct the flow down into the, the wetland areas. And right now, so you've got this big swag right in the middle of that. And so we're doing an engineering study. We got a hundred thousand dollar grant to do an engineering study on how to fill that in. And we're in the process of getting that done as we speak. Uh, TVA and the state had both pretty much pledged that they will give us a million dollars to do that, to get it completed. So we would then have probably the largest site in East Tennessee of level ground that would be marketable. Uh, we were in conversation yesterday. Uh, they're wanting to look at the railroad again about, we've got a railroad spur in the fifth span, but they'd like to see what it would cost to do the rail spur on down into that 100 acre site. So if you started marketing it, then you would have a site it not only has all the amenities of electricity and water and sewer and everything, but would also have rail availability at that site. So we're in the process of uh, trying to come up with $5,000. We had we paid ten to get the, the site started or the engineering work started, but they're saying it's going to be about five more thousand, so we're working on coming up with that now. But uh, we've already received the the $100,000 grant to do the full engineering study. And so uh, all that's going on. And hopefully within the next year or so, we can do the, uh, the full million dollar deal and really have a, a piece of property that uh, uh, would be unavailable anywhere else in East Tennessee really for that, site, that large a site. And the electricity that's available at Phipps Bend is just phenomenal because you've got that 500-161 uh, station there on site. So it doesn't matter what size power needs you have between TVA and host and electric, they can supply about anything. So we feel like we can get that 100 acres fixed uh, and ready to market. We'll, we'll really have something to go after a large, large industry. So. If I forgot anything else, uh, this is early morning for me. Since I retired, I try to stay in bed till seven anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get up earlier today. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, I've got questions. Yeah. Uh, in the book we received last year for the budget, it's showing a total of three ninety eight nine fifty four. And then on this one here, showing for 1819, 267, 791. Now, I've noticed that uh, your WIU grant, it changed uh, from this book to this budget. But I guess I'm just trying to figure out why it's such a big change from this book. I know it's estimated here, but. Well, last year we had, uh, we lost the WIOA program. We had operated that program uh, for over 25 years and at no cost to the county. We brought uh, uh, a 
was a hundred and what was their total budget when they were up and running big time? It's almost three hundred and fifty, wasn't it? Three hundred and fifty thousand of federal dollars, not one penny of Hawkins County money was in that. <clears throat> Last year before the governor changed, uh Governor Haslam decided that uh, he would redo everything involved not only with the WILA program, but with your employment security offices and all of that. Right before he went out of office, he, he threw a hammer in on that bill. The program that we had operated all those years uh, that brought all the federal dollars in, we lost to a group and Elizabeth, and who then awarded the contract, surprisingly, to a group out of Knox County. Yeah. And they now operate that program. And uh, so that's the reason for the huge change in dollars. Uh, it was in our budget, but it was all federal dollars. And I know it's always confusing when I'd come before and they said, well, we're giving you all a half a million dollars. And I said, well, you know, the Two thirds of that is federal dollars that just flow through the industrial board in Hawkins County. And I know uh, we utilize that program very effectively at Houston Electric. We would use those uh, young people in the summer months and stuff, and then we'd end up a lot of times hiring them. It was a good program. We operated it very well for years, but it's gone. and. Uh, they have since come back and I think hired one of our employees mm -hmm. to help them out. They just can't get it to go on. So basically Hawkins County is losing out on all that money, sadly to say. They closed our employment office down, if you recall. They built a brand new building out here on Main Street. And next thing you know, the governor shut it down and said we didn't need one in Hawkins County. Then last year right before he went out of office they opened up a new one over on 66 so that's government work for you so but that's the reason for the big huge difference so uh, what i i guess the easier thing to look at is this this thing that i had rebecca prepare for you it kind of shows you what we do and how how much of it actually goes to running the office so about $59,000 runs the industrial board and the office. And that uh, includes the um, increase that we were asking for. Yes. And uh, then the, what it takes to operate the park. As, as you all have heard me say before, Hawkins County doesn't have any money invested in the development of Fitch Bend Park. That was all paid for by either federal government or the state government, Houston Electric, the gas company, uh, Sedonsville Utility District, really doesn't have anything in it, but they operate. We got them the money for the water tank up there and all the water lines, all the sewer lines were federal monies that we got for the city of Churchill. Uh, the state paid all the roads. Now what the county has to do is maintain what you've got. And that's what that 133,000 does. That maintains it and markets the, the, the project that you've got. Uh, I know I was talking with, uh, I guess, Mr. Brewer about the possibility of building another one over at the interstate somewhere in Bulls Gap or something. You know, we looked at that on a couple of different occasions. Uh, but they, to develop an industrial park of any size, uh, it, I'd be hard pressed to give you a number. You're probably looking at $25, $30 million minimum for uh, Hawkins County to go into the industrial park business. So we basically have a uh, 500 acre park that was given to us. And we pay TVA off as we sell the land. We'll ask uh, Mr. Buchanan if you'll answer uh, Commissioner Burrell's question on the disparity from the actual. Yeah, just expanding upon what Mr. Elkins just said. 
Uh, that, that budget was on a um, federal fiscal year, and so when we got news that it was going to close down, uh, there was no reason to adjust it at the time. Once the program became final, then the budget amendment came in. You guys have already seen that and approved that, and we scaled those back to reflect the actual three months of expenditures that happened in this fiscal year. So that's why you see the disparity of the drop there. And then if you look into this year, you'll see it's at zero because now in this upcoming year, there'll be no months in which that program will be active. Well, also, uh, the sheet he gave us, uh, it's showing two, $224,081 total. And if you take that new money out, it's not matching your estimate on your budget that you give us. So the first time that I've seen the sheet that they provided was the same time you have, so I've not had a chance to look at any of their numbers and check them against ours. It looks like both the salary, yeah, that's the, all the, the estimated on, the yeah, I think that, that's probably the estimated on the sheet that you all prepared is two hundred and eighteen six sixty seven. Yeah. That's so not, I, yes, that's what yes, that's that's what we had said. The salary increase that we requested is included in the one that I prepared, which is the difference. Well, I took it out and compared it to his. It's still a difference. Of what? Is what I'm saying. It's actually 217,852, which are actually actually taxed in for it's, it's showing 218,667. I mean, it ain't much, but. Would that be just take retirement? If that may be the $817. Well, that's taking that out. That's taking that out also. I took out the six two two nine from your total budget. Uh, that's on this sheet. Let's see. I, I, I mean, I checked that twice, but I can see the difference. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. 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 Yeah, looking at their sheet, if you had the three subtotals, uh, the industrial board, the fifth industrial park, and then the other at the bottom, and take out the request, I did come back to the same figure. As, 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 oh, as okay. our budget's matching has yes. been holding okay. out the okay. projected salary increase okay. or requested salary uh, increase. One thing I would mention on that, uh, you know, uh, she doesn't require, she doesn't do it, you know, she pays for her own cell phone, she doesn't have a vehicle. Uh, she doesn't take the uh, hospitalization insurance from the county, so it's you know what you're seeing is exactly what uh, you're paying for her. So, uh, pretty good deal. And that particular job is on the salary scale, correct? Right. Yeah. We, so have we, asked, need to, uh, we need to. I, I apologize. I don't have the scale in front of me, but we need to see where that falls. I think that number was in the same scale, but it's, it's, scale, it's, 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 it's on a different step in so, that same so the scale. So you know, there is a pay grade for that job right. that we have to match to the scale right. to see where that salary sheet would fall. Right. And we're in the middle of a lot of moving around on salary scales and so forth. So if I recall, I looked at it, uh, after one of the industrial board meetings, that this was this was tossed out. I, I think we're in line, but we have to figure. It. I can't say for sure without it in front of me. The only difference, the only difference is that is the benefit package. It was the quiz, the quiz at the bottom wasn't included in that amount. That's right. The right. Yeah, so. In their request, you know, they, they were attached to the expenses of go along with the salary request. So that's like that's something we've added in. But again, that's not in your draft as far as right. calculation. Right. That was the extra request at the bottom. Uh, what impact will uh, that, uh, I'll call it a buyback, brown bull, yeah. They're talking about on the left you know, right. that big swing. Yeah. What impact, well, you know, back in Bredesen's administration, when Barrett was really expanding over there, was when this road 11E uh, proposal actually came up with uh, three phases and all that, and then you had A, B, and 
could see routes as you come through Bulls Gap to get to the interstate. Um, we had asked at that time for the road to be built just to the west of Barrett Industries. And it's very logical to get it out of downtown Bulls Gap. We actually brought uh, Governor Bredesen up here. We picked him up over there. At that time, there's a funeral home where the family dollars at. We picked Bredesen up, and by the time we made it to Rogersville, he had committed that this road was dangerous. Was, I mean, we were passing garbage trucks, uh, East Tennessee iron and metal, uh, all the trucks that, that come through there, Walmart distribution trucks. Uh, yeah, he was uh, walking wide in 66. And he was amazed and he said, well, you need to widen 66 and we need to make sure that this thing, the, the, the phase that goes through to the east of Bulls Gap is the one that they picked. And he said, as soon as I get back to Nashville, we'll start working on this 66. Well, I'm not sure that me and Danny's ever gonna live long enough to see that 66 are led me, so it's just unfortunate uh, the way this thing has progressed. I, I don't cast any blame on anybody, but we have worked, we've met, uh, we had meetings set up with the Department of Transportation Commissioner and everything else over the years to no avail. Uh, I understand, I saw in the paper the other day, I guess, or we got a report back that the 11, uh, the 66 is going into the engineering phase now. And then the funding phase would be about 21 or 22. And then, you know, but you know, I've been around too long, fellas. This stuff just keeps backing up. And, and if you drive down middle and west Tennessee, Roads are still being built. Uh, Knox County, um, roads are going up everywhere, but we don't seem to ever get anything in Hawkins County. It's unfortunate. Uh, if we didn't have TVA and, and the state ECD people helping us, uh, I don't know what we do. And it's just amazing that it uh, seems like we don't ever get what we deserve up here. Maybe we get what we deserve. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a wrong way of looking at it, but we really, they have started purchasing property on the 11E bypass, but they started on Marshtown Union, which doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, they won't get the, the cars and truck traffic, you know, moving out of Hamlin County. When it hits Hawkins County, then, like I say, I don't know if we'll ever see, we'll ever see it, but uh, it's amazing if you drive from, from the red light at Bulls Gap back toward Barrett on that little old curvy road in the afternoons with the school buses and with the truck traffic and everything, it is, it's one of the most dangerous situations I've ever seen. And Barrett, has steadfastly asked for help. We've never been able to give them help. We convinced them 10 years ago to spend $1.2 million putting in two railroad spurs over there to at least they could start shipping their product by rail, okay? By rail to the Home Depots and the Lowe's, which is their two largest customers When they built the, they spent the $1.2 million getting the two rail sidings. Then Norfolk Southern would not give them the rail cars to ship it by. They offered them a 50 foot, which is no, not much larger than a regular 18 wheel truck. So you can understand their, uh, I guess, concern that, that we cannot provide what they need uh, when it comes to saying, you know, doing what we say we can do and things like that. Uh, they needed either a 65 foot high boy or they needed an 80 foot rail car. Norfolk Southern will provide neither for them. And now, like I say, we're, we're back into it with Norfolk Southern over the uh, 
wanted to take away the 50 cars of resin coming in over there. So we got a real problem. And, uh, you know, we as a community and as a county need to be holding arms and, uh, and working together on projects like this uh, rather than, I guess, uh, going about our separate ways. So. The railroad is hard to deal with. Huh? The railroad is hard to deal with. Oh, they're all, I've never seen anything like it. And they'll conveniently lose cars for you. I mean, if you, you know, one of the big problems, as you have figured out, I'm sure, is the coal business. And when John Severe switched over to natural gas and all the other coal-fired plants that uh, they provide coal, they've laid a lot of people off. And, and so it's an economic issue. I don't think they're doing it just to be mean. It's an economic issue to put people back to work. And uh, and so we're trying to put pressure on them, but that's, uh, that's very difficult to do. Final questions for Mr. L. Seven and nine. Uh, thank you. Thank you thank all. You. Thank Appreciate you. it. Decrease in office equipment. Asking for less than last time. Okay. Final call for question. I don't know how she's doing what she's doing. <laughs> I mean, decrease what she already had. I don't, I don't understand. But I, I appreciate it. Uh, we try. The new here. money, the new money you asked them for part time, is that to add one or is that just no, adding no, to? No, that was again? just adding to because we changed the, you know, I was paying minimum wage and I increased it to $10, which it's hard to find, you know, part time for $10. That's why I put that in there. And I probably will not use it, but, you know, instead of having to come and ask you all to transfer and blah, 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 I just, Put that in. I mean, if I don't get it, that's fine too. We will work it out. Did you have a question, Daniel? I'm sorry. No, Commissioner Garrett will ask. Oh, I'm sorry. How much you pay your? Oh, ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Assuming no questions. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Good morning, everybody. Well, I guess you, if you looked at it, you've probably seen 
I've got a balance budget. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And it's pretty much the same as it has been for the last few years. Uh, <clears throat> we've had some in upgrades, some improvements. Thanks to the Improve Act, we're, we're getting some more money. Uh, the disaster hurt us a little bit, but our budget's pretty much on schedule for it has been all along. So maybe when we get started on this year's budget, we'll get back for with the plans originally. Does anybody have any questions on on any of it? I've got one question that don't necessarily concern the budget, but I've got a constituent on Barton Road that's had some issues, and I see got some a message about it. Did he contact you? On Barton Road? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a tile up there that's coming in. We're going to replace that tile. Okay, because it cracked again. we got a temporary fix on that. Okay. I got a game warden. Got a what? A game warden. <laughs> well, I don't want to go there. We've talked about it before. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> he's talking to everyone but the right one, isn't he, Lord? Well, he's talked to him a time or two. He got to go. He did. He did. on change. Uh, Law has proven to be a, a good steward of the county's money. Um, has a large job to keep up with. If you look at the uh, expenditures over revenues, I mean it, it is more expenses than the revenues brings in, but he's always managed to, to keep it as minimal as possible. Now this year has been a little bit more taxing with all the, uh, yeah. the rain that we dealt with in February and March, but that uh that hundred and seventy six thousand I got government money <clears throat> they helped us get us through on a rock. A rock was our big expenses. And uh, I'm gonna have something left from that hundred and seventy six thousand. Uh, we put it in the rock or else I'd probably run out. Because it took so much back there back in February to do the glass plant road. <coughs> Excuse me. That road we had seven hundred thousand government money that we could have used if we had needed it. Thank goodness we didn't need it. Those projects cost about $225,000. So we didn't need all that 700 that they had appropriated to us, like I said, if we needed it. So uh, well, that really helped us out on the, this rain disaster. And we're about to we're finishing that up. Actually, all the big ones are done. There's some little ones popping up every once in a while, just like that tile uh, that will be popping up all summer. I mean, you know, we don't know they're there until they show up. And it's something like a hole falls out in the road, or it's it's where water's just gotten out of there, so much water, and it, it just shows up, and we don't know it's there yet. But We'll have those all summer. We'll just have to contend with them as you do show up. You did an excellent job on the one on Price Road. Thank you. That one worked out too pretty good. With that said, I hate to keep bugging you. Can you take care of that problem about the recycling center over there? Convenient center? Yes, sir. Yeah. We, well, yeah. I've got. Uh, I've got the email laying there still on Debbie's desk. It's been there for a couple of months. We, you know, that's that and the bus turns. We've not done any bus turns. <clears throat> you know, we take care of our jobs first, the highway departments first. Then if a bus shop <clears throat> or they, they want something done, then we work Thursday and as we get through. Same way with the convenience center. We will eventually get to that. That's uh, a mess. Yeah. I have to go in on one side all the time to empty my trash because I'm afraid to drive my vehicle on that other side because there's a big puddle of nasty water. Yeah. And 
I know that as the summer months come along, when it gets hot outside, it's going to attract mosquitoes. Don't be too. sneaky, yeah. yeah Carl said he's going to put fish in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch caramel fish in there. Yeah. Hope to alleviate, alleviate some of the problems. The uh, school superintendent is looking at our program. We have the Commissioner Rail on buying a dump truck to haul their own gravel. Yes. So if he does that, that'll free yeah. you up tremendously on the bus turn. Bus turn yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use the bus turns as a field then. Yeah. And and you know we they pay for the rock plus so much time to deliver them. It, it really nothing comes off of us. It's just the getting the time to do it. That's what it is. So he's looking to get on the same program that the, the solid waste is on. Yeah. Sure, I've got a question. Sorry, my question. Yeah, we probably need to get back on task. I got it. Uh, I guess the question, you may not be able to know this answer right now, but the disaster, the flood, mm -hmm. it, how is that going to impact this year's budget? Are we going to get reimbursed for most of that money, or are we going to have to look at some extra money? Or No, no, we, we take care of that. Uh, I called the Commissioner Metz some time back, and we're going to be able to do all this clean up and everything out of our budget. We're going to, we're the, we take care of that. And this budget is going to be, this budget is pretty much on track as to what all the other budgets have been. We're going to be able to start out fresh, so to speak. Of course, because uh, I know the roads that got washed away got repaired. Yeah. Uh, but did that, as far as roads that were on uh, schedule to be redone or whatever, does that put you back on, on some of those? Well, uh, it might have just a little bit, but not that much. We're we're making our plans now for a paving. We got one to do on this year, which is a state aid, and and it's Thorpe's Chapel. We're fixing to do it, but in this financial year, then next year, we're we're making our schedule just like we always did. Uh, we've got we've got uh, let's see, we got uh, Mount Pleasant down there. No, not Mount Pleasant, Mount Zion. We're fixing to do it, we're fixing to pay it. It comes out of the budget. And there's two or three more we're, we're looking at. No, everything's gonna be pretty much on schedule. <clears throat> uh, we're fortunate. I, I, when it first happened, I thought we was in big trouble. And we was up to a point. For instance, like Lordsburg Frame, the rock alone, and that would cost $16,000 just for the rock. And the, uh, uh, Glass plane up there, it was a little over two hundred thousand dollars. Then I got the hundred seventy six back on that. Um, the glass plane, if I had known what was going to happen, it would have probably scared me, so I wouldn't have done it yet. But we we got it, and everything came out good. It, it worked out great. I'm really I'm really glad. I got several several people you know to thank for that. Uh, Tim Smith of his track hole done an excellent job. He really come in handy on that. Anytime I'd call him, he was there. Uh, Johnny Deacons, they didn't have to, but he superintended in, in uh, Washington County, as I told you all, he called, offered anything he could do <clears throat> to help us. Um, and, and then grew back. That gave us money that we had in our budget that we used also, thanks to Gary Hicks and his staff that, that supported that. That gave us some extra money. So all that combined got us through that hardship. Are you going to be able to go all the way through Thorpe's Chapel when you start through the hole all the way through? No, I've just got enough <clears throat> state money to go to Heck Town. We'll start pricing the road and come to 66. That's, that's what state money we got. Then later on, we'll go to Heck Town. <clears throat> we can go in off of Linda Ferry and come in on that again. And not run over to you, that's Paul. Final questions for Mr. Bean. Thank you all for your time. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Good job. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. So we do have um, some representatives on the hall from the Arlington Citizen Center.
there was a mix up yesterday and I had to catch it, but when they were talking about the time frame for them, that was actually the time frame this morning for the project for Senior Citizen Center. But they are here now. I didn't know if you wanted to hear them before lunch, after this break, right now, but I just want to make you aware that they are here. All right, yes, sir. They've been here since they picked so I'm sure they appreciate that. Sue Jarrett from Mount Carmel Senior Center. Sue Jarrett. 137 in the contribution um, We didn't ask for an increase, but I understood that I was needed to be here to fill some questions. several calls and complaints uh, on the budget for the Mount Carmel Senior Center and uh, so I obtained financial statements for the last four or five years and looked them over and the thing that concerned me probably more than anything um, that you had maybe you can explain it uh, you had written off since 2015 all the way up to 2018. Each year we wrote off mostly your same fixed assets, um, which amounted to over $75,000, $77,000. Could you explain why you could do that? We got a CPA and we are audited each year as you're well aware and we do straight line deduction, depreciation, and the assets fluctuate, they do fluctuate. And I understood that you personally had a problem with us depreciating the van. And as I told you in an earlier meeting, that was not depreciation, that was an asset. Um, and other things, equipment comes and goes, and I guess that's one reason why the assets sort of remain the same. Um, the van didn't keep coming and going. Pardon? It, the van did not. It was originally valued at a little over $20,000. Yes. And every year it got completely written off for $20,000. No, it's not written off. If you will look, you will see under the depreciation, you will see the depreciation value. And George, if you will look on the assets, you will see that that van is an asset, not a depreciation. Yeah, but the, the accumulated depreciation of that is taken off. I know you don't have to pay taxes on it. It's not an issue there. But uh, I'm just not familiar with uh, this accounting procedure that how you can keep writing off the same thing every year. Or what the purpose of that is. Okay. Mr. Bridgewell, some of these questions are probably best ask of them outside of this meeting uh, and you've had opportunity to bring those questions uh, yes, to Mr. Jerry but for this committee we're essentially reviewing this and then when we meet in the next session for to prepare a draft to then the committee both the committee or, or We'll simply just give a yay or nay for the funding. But we, uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have one other question. <clears throat> All I'm reading why I bring these up is because they were brought up to me uh, by different people in the community. So I just want you to know that. Uh, I was just trying to get a better explanation so that I can inform them on what's going on. Well, if you have questions about that in the future, I would appreciate if you would come straight to us instead of getting us in a meeting and wasting other people's time. Well, some of those come from the board. Yeah, I was at the meeting. Thank, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Are there any additional questions for Ms. Jarrett pertaining to uh, the contribution? Assuming none, thank you, Ms. Jarrett. Thank you, and thank you all for your time and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take a break. Do we have any? see who's out there. I think there is some people out there, but we're <laughs> caught up on our schedule, so I'm not sure if we have early contributions or who they are. That's bad team in the chat. I apologize for having to go too much, but I just want to use that. I never noticed until you brought him up. Nobody don't miss you. <laughs> We do have Curtis Bean here from Lakeview, uh, Monty Protocol. I don't know if you want to address that now or, or after lunch. He's the only other gentleman here now. Let's go ahead and take care of that now. Biggest issue, I guess, this year is we just had to have a truck rebuilt. We spent about twenty-four thousand dollars on one of our front-line pumpers, and so we got that debt to pay off. Plus, trying to keep operating this year. Chairman Metz, would you like to share, Mr. Bean, on what? We discussed yesterday concerning the uh, turnout year. Yes, I don't know if, if you heard his, or he was involved in uh, his department mentioned. He said, uh, yeah, you know, Lake Lake and Strickland applies for the grant for the turnout year. Y'all applied for that. Yeah, Jim has been working on grants this year. We've applied for a grant, uh, also for a USDA grant for a mini pumper. We did get approved for it, but they don't have the money now, so we're still waiting on that. That's only a partial payment on the truck, so. But we are, our turnout gear is gonna be outdated after this year. So, I mean, every department in the county is probably using outdated gear right now. We are. We've got some outdated gear, and at the price set of gear costs, you just don't go out and buy it every day. And, uh, it, it seems that's the most pressing issue for all the volunteer fire departments is the fine out gear. So I believe the consensus of the that me and the last, all the the last turnout gear we've got, we've got a grant on it, and it's coming up. Our 10 year limit's running out on it, so. Well, I believe the consensus uh, from the questions 
that I've had in the comments of this committee and those in attendance to, to try and uh, ensure that we have funds available to match whatever grants that you can obtain. So, uh, I think everybody's on board with doing that. So we're very hopeful that you'll be successful in those grants. Uh, we certainly appreciate all the volunteer fire departments that have been open and honest with their needs and desires, but also uh, not only that, but what they actually need and what's most pressing other than a, a wish list, so to speak. So we appreciate what you do. I know you've heard from all the departments in the county so far, and we're not the only one hurting. Everybody is. That's the price of materials and everything's going up all the time. Labor on vehicles is going up. Like I said, we just had to have that pumper pump rebuilt, $24,000. And we, for some reason, are the only, only department in the county that's not got a truck grant. Out of the eight fire departments, volunteer departments in the county, we're the only one that has never got a truck grant. We've applied numerous times but we did uh, get the USDA approved for a mini pumper this year, but now we're waiting on them to get money. We don't know how much longer that's gonna be, but that's only $25,000, and we're gonna to have to pay the rest of it. So we figured that we can build our own truck for around $60,000, so we're we get the $25,000 grant from them, then we've got to put another $30,000, $35,000 with it. So, so we're gonna be in debt pretty good this year if we do get a grant. I mean, we've been, been lucky. Your grants. we've been lucky over the years that we've not had to go in debt big time, but we're going to this year. And then, my name, my name goes on the note. <laughs> my, I'm the assistant chief, Jim's the chief. He and I signed the notes. So. Mr. Curtis, who's, who's been applying for your office on your grants? Who's been writing them? No, uh, who, who writes your grants? Jim's been writing them, and he's had Gary helping him write some of them. I think. Mentioned that Gary was doing the three on this yesterday. Wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Gary was instrumental in helping get Stanley Valley a new tanker or pumper or whatever out there three or four years ago. Uh, Lakeview has two fire departments, right? Stations. stations. Two stations. Right. Lakeview do you have two stations? I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> Yeah, two stations. That's good. All right. You got stations for the third one, Lakeview. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. And uh, EMS, I think they're stationed at one of your stations, yeah. correct? Yeah, EMS is at station one. And I've noticed they're, they're paying utilities and that vehicle a little bit there, right? We, they give us monthly rent down there. That helps pay the water bill and the gas bill and utilities so we're not we're not making anything off of them time we pay our utilities and their cable and internet we're we're not making any money <laughs> but it is helpful to the community to have them down there yeah. that's that's more important than us making money off of them Fully understand. Any final questions? Thank you. Thank you. Tell me a question about all these different agencies have to file individual grants. Would it be the any advantage? 
that they do that. Like through the Fireman Association? Well, through whoever. Just the county, you know, the grants is a big thing. I know a lot of places, yeah, I don't think it hurt for the county to even have a grant writer. I know it's probably going to stand in the budget, but if, if they had somebody, I don't know how many, I know there's a lot of grants out there uh, for various things, but could one grant for the county, would it, I said, would it be more beneficial instead of having, what is it, eight volunteer fire departments, eight different fire departments applying for grants? That's not a question that I'm qualified to answer myself. Miss Roberts, do you have anything to add? I'm not positive about this, but I think that each department has to file for their individual grant. They have different needs. Each one of them has a different need. And so I just think that for the turnout here is what, is what I'm thinking about. I, I can't answer that question. I, I really don't know that for sure. It was discussed, Mr. Chairman, a couple of years ago maybe about one fire department countywide had one paid employee and that would help us on obtaining the grants if we had that that needs to come through the farm association their recommendation and uh, but that would be a way we could do grants for the whole county i think the challenge is they each have their own organization they have their own officers uh, they have their own budgets yes. and and it would be great if we could you know lump it together and do a grant but i think it would be challenging because of the way it's structured that's why it needs to come through the farm association they need to recommend and tell us how they need to enact it and they had a bill in the state legislature to uh aid rural fire departments in uh how one employee you know, might probably pay by the state uh, and other benefits, but uh, the legislature is over with, so I, I suppose that didn't pass. I think they put it on hold. I was yeah. watching that one also, yeah. I think it's on hold. Basically, what you got though, you've got these fire departments competing against each other for these grants. Because not all of them is going to get it. Just like Curtis said, they've never got a grant for a truck. You know, so you can't, if you, if you do uh, the Farmers Association, then it's up to them to say who gets it. And we heard yesterday not all the volunteer fire departments participate with the Farmers Association, so somebody can get left out. Well, and that, that was one of my questions, I guess I was going to come up with about the turnout gear. If three apply, say, this year to get the turnout gear, then next year three more apply, and they don't even get the grant, I mean, what are we going to do in that situation there also? So, just saying, I mean. Just have to come up with a game plan, which I think would probably initiate our public safety and go into terms of uh, budget committee from there. Can all of the, are all of the, I was here yesterday, but are all the fire departments going to apply for the, the grants? Or? Sure, we're Clinch Valley, Lakeview, and Streeterville are currently applying. Are they the only ones that can apply, or can the others apply? As far as I know, the only one that wishes to apply can apply, but that's the only three that are currently processing the documentation to apply for the grant, actively pursuing. That's what we were told. Right. Yeah. I thought Goshen Valley has applied for one. Yeah. I thought they had. Yeah. I thought they, they he, he, he was in the process of working one out. Tony was. And those are the only three that was mentioned to us yesterday. And, and I also I'll, think I'll that, him in and see what he said. I thought he was, I talked to him last night and he said they were looking at one, so I don't know whether they were applying for it or not. Commissioner Davis, but you not being here yesterday. Chairman, what we, there's $16,000 in the, uh, in the line item for this particular thing, I guess, and what we decided yesterday or touched bases on was Applying five thousand dollars each to help those three departments on the five percent matching mm -hmm. on turnout here. Uh, 
the gentleman I spoke to us yesterday, he said it was uh, $7,000 a set. Mm -hmm. I had a chief to call me last night. He said, Mount Carmel just replaced a, a set. Now, that wasn't the breathing apparatus. $1,800. That would be for the just the clothes. Yeah. Right. Just the clothes. But the, those, why those three were mentioned is we're just gonna try to help those three on the 5% and try to do three per year. And, and I think, uh, Chairman, that when we do a public safety, I mean, we kinda need to set a limit. I mean, if one fire department comes and acts for 10, and then another one comes and acts for 20, I mean, will that double a grand or will it still be $5,000? I mean, I guess it's something we need to. Well, it would be whatever the match to the grant is, is what we would be asking for. Well, are we strictly talking about for the turnout year now? Uh, any, yeah, not, any. Not. Yeah. Personally, I think that's the most pressing yeah. issue. Yeah. Because, I mean, some of them grants is not 5% match, it's right. a whole lot more. Yeah. I think at this time a lot of that is just pure speculation. So if we get more information, we'll, we'll be able to make a more educated decision. I think the turnout here will be the right choice. Right? And one thing we do need, and I'll say this, one thing we do need to remember is these people ride a lot of kids. I might throw it out, Chairman. Three years ago, uh, we had us a budget put in place and the night of the commission meeting, we cut the, uh, all the fire departments to the uh, Humane Society, we, we cut them all 2%. We cut every all the contributions 2%. 5%. Well, the night of the meeting, they all were restored. Except? Except the fire departments and the Humane Society, and it was 2% that night. At that night, it was 2% that night. And I've had We restored that. everything but the, the, the year before was when we cut. We started, yeah. and, and that was the only thing that got cut was the contributions. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we was talking about how how bad a shape the budget was in, and we, we was under the assumption that we were going to cut everything. Right, and they and we started restored everything with right. the contributions. Back the to the fire department. Yes. They ended up taking a 2% cut, and uh, Mr. Buchanan there this morning, he did the figures on it. And if we restored the fire departments as what was they originally had for one year, and the Humane Society at 2%, it was $5,600 total. That would help a lot of people across the whole county. Something to think about. Do we have anything else scheduled at this time? We had a break and an open period for anything that we were not able to finish or run over. Uh, that's not the case. So we don't have anything until the potential of nonprofits showing up after lunch. Right. Uh, lunch will, they typically been here about 11.30. It sounds like they're not, I'm not sure they're ready, but it sounds like they're here. <laughs> We'll recess at this time and we'll try to get a game to plan together real quick on lunch if we next but I think. Get the game going. <laughs>